Welcome everyone to uh, this week's broadcast of Ascend TV, Life on the Autism Spectrum. I'm your co-host Keith Halperin. And I'm your co-host Will Burnick. And our guest today is Timothy Daly, Associate Dean of Exceptional Minds. But before we get into the discussion, Will, what's with your t-shirt today? This week's shirt, this week is my Scott Wiener t-shirt. I'm wearing it because I marched for Scott Wiener in the SF Pride Parade. This month is San Francisco Pride Pride Month. I, I, I'm wearing this to, to celebrate Pride Month. Tell us about how you came to Exceptional Minds. Yeah, thank you for turning it over to me, Will. So I started at Exceptional Minds back in 2018 as a visual effects instructor, actually, before I came into this current role. So I worked my way up to it, essentially. Prior to that, I had been teaching various classes in the Los Angeles area at different colleges related to visual effects and animation. So I had this large digital arts background. What I kept noticing about a lot of the students that I was teaching is they would put out these really great projects and we would gear them towards essentially focusing on again jobs and developing their portfolios and their demo reels throughout these programs at these various colleges throughout the LA area. So I continuously was looking for teaching jobs and I came across the net search and I found exceptional minds. And what amazed me was I was looking at their work and I'm like, wow, this work is so well done. The level of detail that these students put out absolutely amazing. I've got to apply there. I've got to get in here. So I applied to Exceptional Minds, got the interview, was hired on, as I said, as a visual effects instructor, taught visual effects and motion graphics for about two years, roughly. And then for my third year at Exceptional Minds, I did kind of a hybrid of that while doing some more administrative roles like I do now and kind of working my way up into overseeing everything overall day-to-day -day operations in our academy, things of that nature. So that's kind of the pathway that I took and how I came to it. So what I love about being a teacher and what I loved about the first two years was just, again, seeing the progression that would happen with these students. So overall, you would see them start from a very place where some of them were just like, hey, I'm very confused about this program. I need help in understanding this and really comprehending how to execute these different functions in this program. And by the end of the year, they would produce some great work. So seeing that progression and seeing that journey and getting to a place where the output is absolutely amazing, it was very gratifying to me. And it's one of the reasons why I love working at the company. For those of our viewers who aren't familiar with Exceptional Minds, uh, could you elaborate a little on what you do there? Yeah, so Exceptional Minds specifically is tailored towards teaching visual effects and animation to students on the autism spectrum. Our age range is typically young adults, so, so usually around like the 18 range. During the summertime, we do take high schoolers and a little bit younger to get involved in our workshops, but we teach that type of range right there. So my specific role now as the associate dean is I oversee our everyday functions in the academy, make sure the instructors have everything they need. If the students are having problems, overseeing and making sure that they get the support that they need. I oversee our part-time programming, which is what we have going on right now, our summertime programming. So we're offering right now these two week workshops. So we still have three sets of them throughout the rest of the summer. So pretty excited to be leading those right now and getting those out because these are great exposure workshops for anybody who's interested in exceptional minds and learning what we refer to the field of digital arts. So we're not only just animation and visual effects, we're also 
a school that encompasses all these digital arts programs, like things like video editing, sound design. There's all sorts of different options in the digital arts field that we have, that we offer. So I oversee that. And then on a day-to-day -day basis, I will also oversee some of our tech needs that we have going on within the organization. So I do a lot, a little bit of a lot of different things, but my main area of focus is overseeing our part-time programming. Is um, All Exceptional Minds programming uh, local to uh, Los Angeles area or is some of it done virtually? That is an excellent question. And I'm glad that you asked that because no, even before COVID, we offered what are called part um, private lessons or small group workshops, which we would offer virtually teaching people across the country these different subjects of digital arts specifically. Mm -hmm. So during COVID, we were completely online, completely virtual, and our teachers went into that mode with no problem. We transitioned in basically a week and everybody was like ready to go teach our students and our students were very successful when we were online. So now that we're back in person, but we also have people who are from different parts of the country, we're offering both online and in-person classes. So for the summertime, the majority of our offerings actually are online with a handful of courses, workshops that are in-person as well. At Exceptional Minds, we're very aware of the fact there are too many young adults with autism that are unemployed. There's nothing that these young adults can't do and they keep proving it time and time again. My favorite thing about Exceptional Minds, I've been able to grow so much, started seeing more clarity in my art style. The environment that we're given here is encouraging that creativity, the talent within us. This was where I was going to get the necessary skills to do what I wanted to do. It's really important that they understand the finer points of how to work within an office and how to work within a business structure. I realized my true calling to be an animator. The ultimate goal is to help our students actually work in the entertainment industry and have meaningful careers as artists and technicians. They're feeling good about what they do and what they can do in the future. I like film, I like animation, learned more about visual effects, found out that I'm good at it, and now I do it full time. <laughs> it has been amazing just discovering what I'm good at. We have answers that we didn't have before friendships that we didn't have before. The community is very important. I've always felt like an outsider. I feel so much less alone than I used to. They know that they are making progress towards an achievable goal, not just a job, but a career path. Some of our graduates have gone on to work for Nickelodeon, Marvel. Multiple Star Wars films. A job at Fox and at Sony. Cartoon Network. Sesame Street Workshop being given the opportunity to write and direct for them. So while people with autism might learn differently, they bring incredible skills to bear. We always say at Exceptional Minds that what makes you different makes you extraordinary. There are people who do get it and people who just don't get it. Stick with the people who do get it. They're the ones who will help you be your best self. Uh, Will, I understand you have a few more questions for Timothy. Tell us about what jobs Exceptional Minds has to offer. People who come through our full-time program, we work with them in order to help them gain internships and potential entry-level jobs. There's a specific student who was in our VFX program who just started working for this company, Pixel Logic, three weeks before they were actually supposed to graduate. So we're like, yeah, get out of here. We want you to start working. So that's what we're all about. We definitely want our students to start working in the their chosen field of interest specifically. So we have two in two students this year who are also doing internships at Mattel. You wouldn't think of Mattel as a digital arts company, you think of the toy company, right? Mm -hmm. But that just goes to show you there are these different types of jobs in these different types of companies that people who have this interest in digital arts and are skilled in the digital arts can gain and get. Another great thing about Exceptional Minds is we also offer the potential for our graduates to work in our own dedicated studios. What I mean by that specifically is 
Exceptional Minds has an animation studio and a visual effects studio. So we work in from outside clients in visual effects and in animation on a contract and a freelance basis. So when those jobs come up, when they open up, we allow our students, our graduates, the opportunity to apply for those so they can work on those particular shots and gain that real world job experience. So all sorts of different avenues, all sorts of different ways that we essentially help our students out in gaining that particular job experience. We're always looking for new ways to get them working and get them out into the industry. We have many other clients that we also work with, but that's the one that people are always like, oh, wow. So there are some movies through them that we've worked on continuously. So we worked on um, specifically um, the different Avengers movies. So all, so Guardians, all these previous past Marvel movies that came out. So what our students will do on those shots specifically is we'll get a few shots, dedicated shots from that company, company specifically and our graduate artists, so I was talking about the VFX studio earlier, right? <laughs> They'll do things on these shots like rig removals, wire removal. So what that means is they'll do these functions like they paint out digitally these items that are in the shots that we don't want in the shots anymore, or they'll add additional items in. So do tracking all these VFX functions to give the shots the final output, the final look that they need to have. So, so essentially your belief in the shot is verified essentially. So you're not going like, hey, why is there that weird extra item in that corner right <laughs> there? So yeah, we'll pay attention to a lot of those things and make sure that we get rid of them. So that's kind of the function that our VFX studio serves is getting rid of items like that, making the shots look great and awesome in their finalized form. I was wondering how you would describe, you know, this wonderful journey for your students uh, and the benefits of from the challenges to the changes that they've been through. Um, I was wondering how you can describe like their reactions, like, like, I'm sure it cut like in colors, like, or so like, I know I don't really want to leave, you know, but I, and again, I'm consciously grateful that you did, you know, push me to leave. Um, how would, you, how would you just, you know, describe their, um, how would you just d describe their experiences with that? So. Yeah. So, each student is different. So we have lots of different cases of the students who kind of go through that evolution, as you were saying a little bit, and some of them who need a little bit more of that dedicated support. And we see that evolution usually when a student goes through our full-time program. So our full-time program is this three-year commitment where they choose either to focus on animation or visual effects specifically, and then they develop their specific skill set in one of those two disciplines. So our teachers and our behavioral staff will basically guide the students with the support, any problems, any issues that they're facing, give them feedback on it and tell them methods they can use to help deal with different situations that they encounter throughout the time. So it's this gradual process essentially to see them evolve and become more comfortable working in this profession in an environment with their peers and then and then eventually in a professional environment. So that progression happens throughout time specifically for them is what we've seen. Awesome. So would you say that, you know, would you help them feel like, yeah, you know, it's normal to feel this way that, you know, that it's, it's, it's scary to go out there. It's okay to feel that way. And, you know, ap you know, it slowly digests and then in a way, do you like influence them saying, you know what, take that challenge and put it into creativity? Like, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So 
we always want to encourage our students to take the risk as far as the job goes, like if they want to go for a particular job. So what I've seen is like a lot of them are like, hey, I don't know if I'm ready to apply for this. Do you think I'm ready to apply and go for this? And that's like, what is going to happen if you actually apply? Worst thing that can happen is like, we're not interested in you right now the reality of the workplace, right? So rejection's hard for everybody. We all hate being rejected. It's also something to think about in the sense of like, you go through this a lot, you fail faster, you do it again and again, and then eventually you're going to get where you want to go. But yeah, you have to be willing to put yourself out there and be willing to be like, hey, I am awesome and there's no reason I can't do this. So we help nurture our students to get Gain this confidence in themselves. And now Jennifer Brooks, our book correspondent, has a question for our guest. Yes, Tim. So we know that there have been a lot of changes in the gaming and entertainment industries. Uh, what do you see as the future direction of these industries and how your students fit into it? Great question. So we're seeing in visual effects specifically, traditionally over the past several years, there has been this notion and you'll see a lot of movies behind the scene that like, hey, you're going to shoot a bunch of these actors on green screen and you're going to key them out. Out. Sometimes you're going to have to go into those individual frames and go frame by frame, rowing individual frames, individual parts of the frame to put certain elements back in through the method of rotoscoping. We're also seeing right now the evolution and the merging of the 3D and the gaming technology using all these parts together in this great way to create more believability, more yeah. awesome final outputs of these very great shots that happen. So what we're seeing a lot of happening right now, opposed to a lot of people using traditional green screen, they'll use what a method which is called basically rear view projection. Well, it might be called rear view projection, but like it's projecting a background behind the artist or the actor in a shot opposed to using a traditional green screen. I refer to rear view projection because that's what happened in the olden days like the 1950s 1960s with movies but what we do now or what a lot of different companies are experimenting with is using the gaming engine unreal to integrate those backgrounds and then having some of those shots some of those backgrounds spill onto the actors in the foreground through the stage that's set up specifically to create this believability of integration. So these technologies are being used hand in hand with one another in order to create this really cool, realistic output and believability. And then of course, there's always the integration of 3D into these shots. So you have to take a 3D model, light it correctly in a program like Maya or put it into a program like Unreal, make sure that it's lit correctly all and textured correctly and going through all these processes all these render passes per se to match the to match the visual output of what's in the computer with what's in the real world essentially so all these elements are working hand in hand with one another in order to get greater believability greater output in the realm of realism for these very advanced digital arts shots. How do you get involved in Exceptional Minds? So the easiest way is actually just to go on our website. There's a direct link on there. If you scroll down the homepage to apply to our summer workshops, you just fill out an application. You submit the autism diagnosis. There is a small application fee to pay, but you fill out that basic information and then we send you the information of our course offerings. I now have a uh, two-part uh, technical question for you. What can you tell us about using software like uh, Live 2D or rigging software for VTubers or streamers? Yeah, so Exceptional Minds, while we want to get involved probably in more software like that in the future, our rigging software that we focus on right now is dedicated into either exploring it in a 3D program like Maya or something to do with puppet rigging in a program like Toon Boom 
volume harmony. So that's really where our rigging aspects go right now. In the future, again, we're always looking to incorporate new uh, digital arts software. So there is the possibility for that in the future. But right now, that's primarily where our rigging is focused. Excellent. And then uh, the second part is sort of a prequel question to what uh, Stacy was asking you. Could you describe what the challenges are of adapting to the courses and programs for someone who hasn't been involved in this type of training and, and coursework before? So the challenges that we'll see our students go through is just being able to work a little bit independently to output projects. So sometimes it'll take them a little bit of time to gain that independence in order to produce high quality final work that they can put onto their demo reel. What we do to help them along that is we give them consistent feedback in their classes about how they're doing, how they're progressing. We encourage them to attend our after school labs to get additional help from instructors. And we just really think about like, hey, what is your area of interest? Like, is there a particular project in your particular discipline you'd like to focus on? Or is there a way we could take the assignment that your instructor is giving you and modify it to your area of interest? We're always keeping these considerations in mind while it's like, okay, you have to come to this point where there are some of these tasks, some of these assignments that you will have to do. We always want to think about like, hey, is there a different way we can approach this to make this more fun and engaging for you? And that will often come with like having discussions about like, hey, you're into this particular thing. So let's modify this so it focuses on that aspect of it so you can create a high quality project that utilizes your particular area of interest. We'll now hear from our cultural correspondent, Stacey Kennedy. Hello, everybody. Uh, today, uh, I would like to at first make a reminder that Saturday, July 2nd, will be the ice skating uh, event at the... Uh, San Jose, in San Jose, 1500, uh, um, what is it called? The South 10 Street. Um, yeah, there's the skating rink there that Autism Society, uh, San Francisco Bay Area are gonna be taking part in uh, July 2nd, starting at 11 a.m. And um, you can, you can uh, rent equipment or, you know, skates uh, there and make sure to bring uh, somebody, you know, within the community. Uh, with you that, um, you know, because that's what it's about. It's about the autism community and that they're going to be having skating and, you know, you can have family and friends with you or so. Um, so there's that reminder. Thursday, July 7th, there's going to be two different events happening at the same time on the same day uh, on uh, 301 Golf Club Drive in Santa Cruz. There's going to be this um, garden class where there will be a constructed area that's very wheelchair wheelchair friendly and will raise the beds of different levels that need a uh, I'm guessing like bed plants that need a uh, different levels of TLC I'm guessing that means tender loving care I hope. <laughs> <laughs> that they can um oh and you um what it is is that in this garden you you will be able to um uh grow and you know plants of course but like uh, grow your own food and then eat it later or so and um what's happening in the exact same uh place is the art uh the art in the garden where in-person outdoor art classes will be held and Teresa will be leading the creative time to use of nature and the as a medium to hold in the picnic area so both of those things are happening July 7th, Thursday. And apparently, I think um, this, this happens every Thursday. So, um, and I believe you've got to go to the benevitidycause.org uh, site because that's, uh, that's where the information is held or so. Um, and the last thing is uh, shinelight.org. I uh, experienced this the other day or so, and it's a, uh, service and help and support for people with autism. Um, it pretty much describes um, the, uh, what those uh, uh, on the, you know, adults on the spectrum, what they could do as social activities, especially and recreational 
things like uh, music, storytelling and dancing and board games. And of course, you know, each of us, you know, have our things that, you know, besides those things, probably we, you know, would do recreationally. And also there's educational activities. And this is on shinelight.org. We'll now hear from Jennifer Brooks, a book correspondent. Ah, thank you, Keith. Today, I would like to tell you about a children's book by author Claire Vanderpool. It is called Navigating Early. This book did win a literary prize for children's books, not the Newbery, a different prize. And first, let me tell you what Claire Vanderpool has to say about her story. The idea for the story that became Navigating Early came to Claire several years ago when her mom told her about a vivid dream she'd had of a young man with an extreme talent for playing the piano. In her dream, the young man had no training but could play even the most difficult piece after hearing it just once. Her dream was more about a friendship between this young man and a young woman. But the idea of writing a story about someone with an unexplainable gift stayed in Claire's head. What would that person's gift be? How would it affect the rest of his life? First order of business was research. So Claire read a book by Daniel Tammet called Born on a Blue Day, Inside the Extraordinary Mind of an Autistic Savant, a book that I hope to feature on a future episode. In it, Daniel tells his story of growing up with autism and the amazing ways his mind works. It should also be noted, since this is Pride Month, that Daniel is homosexual. He has a husband or a male partner. <laughs> Daniel can perform extraordinary calculations in his head. He has memorized more than 22,000 digits of pi, and he sees numbers as shapes, colors, and textures. Daniel's story was a springboard to that of Claire's character, Early Auden. By our standards today, Early might be diagnosed with a high functioning form of autism. He would also be considered a savant, a person who exhibits extraordinary ability in a highly specialized area, such as mathematics or music. Claire chose not to use the terms autism or savant in the book because most people in 1945, when this book is set, would have been unfamiliar with them and most people with autism would have been undiagnosed. A person like Early would have just been considered strange. Early is not meant to be a representation of the autistic child. He is a unique and special boy with an amazing mind, a beautiful spirit, and an unexplainable gift. Like Daniel Tammet, he sees the number pi in shapes, colors, and textures. But as Early developed in Claire's mind and in the story, Claire realized that his amazing gift went even further to early, the numbers in pi also tell a story. That brings up the next area of research, pi. Early Auden has savant abilities in mathematics. He can perform extraordinary calculations in his head. He calms himself and organizes his thoughts with patterns and sequence, sorting by color and quantity. And for him, the number pi is the most special and beautiful of numbers. And that number tells a special and beautiful story. In the story, there is, of course, a certain amount of fact alongside a fair amount of fiction. Yes, and now let me tell you about the story itself. The story is unfortunately not told from the point of view of Early himself. It is told from the point of view of his best friend, Jack Baker. Jack Baker is sent from his home in Kansas to attend a boys boarding school in Maine, where he doesn't know anyone. And that's where Jack meets Early and Jack befriends Early. And during a break from school, the boys set out for the Appalachian Trail on a quest for a great black bear, which is very exciting to read, especially since our uh, Asa and friend, Paul Nussbaum has spent the last several years hiking on the Pacific Crest Trail on the west coast of the country. The Appalachian Trail runs along the eastern side of the country. Well, folks, that's our program for this week. Until next time, I'm Keith Halperin. I'm Will Burnick. I'm Stacey Kennedy. I'm Jennifer Brooks. 
And I'm Tim Daly. And uh, we are Ascend TV, live on the autism spectrum. Until next time, stay well, stay safe, and have a great summer. Mm -hmm.